In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a table of contents in Microsoft Word, just like this one. This table of contents is known as an automatic table of contents because Word populated the headings and page numbers for me with just a few clicks. So stick around and I'll show you how this is done. Before I start, it's worth noting that for this example, I'll be using Microsoft Word 365 Pro Plus for this tutorial. So if you have a different version of Word to the one I am using, then the process of creating the table of contents may be slightly different to what I will show you. All right, so let's get started. At the minute in Word, my first page is blank because I want my table of contents to be entered here. Then for pages two to five, I have some dummy text without headings. Before I can create a table of contents, I firstly need to add my headings. Word will then use these headings to populate the table of contents. But before I can go ahead and add these, I think it's important that you understand the different heading structures as this will affect how the headings appear within the table of contents. You can think of heading structures like levels. Any main headings in the piece of work are classed as heading ones. Then any subheadings under this will be classed as heading twos and so on and so forth. So for example, if I was writing a thesis, my first level headings could be my introduction, and I also could have first headings for methods, results, discussion, and conclusion. Now, any subheadings under these sections will be classed as heading twos. So I could have separate subsections in my methods for each of my methods used. For example, method one, two, and three. So that's a brief overview on the heading levels. Let me now jump back into Word to show you how we can enter these levels, which will then let me create a table of contents. So let's say that on page two, this is the start of my introduction. So what I'll do is type introduction. Now to class this piece of text as my first heading, I will select it and then go to the home tab. Then I will select heading one from the styles options. Notice how the appearance of the heading has changed to fit with the style of the heading one style. If you want to edit the style so that it looks differently, then you can simply right click on heading one in the styles box and select modify style. This will open up a new window and here you can change the formatting such as the font, font size and color. I'll leave mine as default and click cancel to return to my document. Another cool thing that happens when you create headings in Word is that the text under the headings will be grouped so you can actually collapse the content in that section. For example, if I mouse scroll over my heading, notice that a black arrow appears. And if I click on this, any text under this will collapse and essentially be hidden. I'm going to go ahead and finish adding my headings. So at the top of page three, I will create another heading called methods. And since this is also a main section in my document, I will select the heading one style. I'll then add a few subheaders for the methods section such as method one, and this will be classed as a heading two style. I'll also add two more method subsections. So now I'm ready to create my table of contents. To do this, click on an area where you want the table to be inserted. For this example, I will click the top of the first page. Then I will go to references, table of contents. And there are a few options you can select from here. The first two options are types of automatic tables. These types of tables will be populated based on the different heading styles used in the document. This is what we will be using. In terms of the difference between these, as far as I'm aware, they only differ in their appearance. For example, the second option has a heading called table of contents, whereas the first option only states contents. The third option is a type of manual table. If you select this, you will have to manually enter the headings and page numbers for yourself. But we don't want to spend time doing that. We want Word to do the work for us. Manual tables can be useful for small documents, but for large documents, I recommend sticking with the automatic tables. Also, it's worth noting at this point that you can set up your own custom table of contents by selecting this option. For this example, I will select the second option. Now you can see the table of contents has appeared on the first page. Notice how it has automatically populated the table with the headings in my document. 
Also, see how those classed as heading 1 are aligned to the left, while those that are heading 2, like in my methods section, are indented slightly, so you know that they are subheadings. Then we have the page numbers to the right where each heading is placed. A very important thing to note is that despite this table being called an automatic table of contents, any changes you make to your document once the table of contents has been added are not automatically updated in the table. So if you add more headings or remove sections, you will need to update the table so the changes are reflected. To give you an example, say if I change my first heading to say Introduction to Study X, notice that my table of contents still says the first heading is just Introduction. To update the table, select it and click the Update Table button. There will then be two options. You can either update the page numbers only or update the entire table. The first option is only really useful if your headings have remained the same, but you have added more content to each section, so now the headings have moved around. The second option will update the entire table, so not just the page numbers. And it is this option that I will select, and then I'll click OK. Now notice my first heading has been updated to reflect the change I have just made. I recommend that you update the table of contents frequently after you make changes to your document, and especially at the very end when you're near completion. Finally, if you decide you want to remove the table of contents, you can simply select it and go to References, Table of Contents, Remove Table of Contents. And that brings me to the end of this tutorial. Now you know how to add a table of contents that is automatically populated using Microsoft Word. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.